You don't so, call out what's best in you. Yes. And then and then you can't live without that. Yeah. You need that. You need that. And so and the trick seems to be that voluntary acceptance of the adversity. See, that's one of the things that I think is core to the mythos of Christianity. Because there's an idea that you should pick up your cross and stumble uphill. And that's really what that means, is mm. that you you know, you set your you set your eyes on some high level vision, the city of God on the hill, whatever that happens to be, you know. And then you take the burden, whatever burden you're capable of lifting, which is obviously going to be a burden of suffering, at least to some degree, and you carry that voluntarily. That's the trick, is that, and then you say, well, you need a purpose in your life. It's like, well, look, there's a lot of problems around you in the world. You have some problems, some problems even that bother you, right? Personally, they seem to call out to you those problems. Maybe those are your problems. Those are the problems you should solve. And those, I think, are the call to adventure. It's yes. like, there's a problem. It bugs me. Okay. Do something about it. That's your problem. There's a certain amount that you could tolerate. I mean, I think it's like weight training. There's a certain amount where it becomes detrimental, yeah. where you've overtrained, yeah. your body's breaking down. There's a certain amount of problems that you have in your life that are extremely beneficial. Yeah. Because through going through these problems, sorting them out, you you build your spirit, you, you build your character. And if you don't accomplish anything and you never encounter any problems you you are this gelatinous soft atrophied soul mm -hmm. and you don't have the intestinal fortitude or the spirit or the the, the 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 human potential has not been developed to the point where you can overcome adversity the only way to overcome adversity is to face it so that that optimum that you were talking about so i've really been interested in the neurophysiology of the of the sense of meaning because neurophysiology, neurophysiology. Of yeah, the sense yeah, because of meaning. the me meaning, the feeling of meaning is an instinct. Right. It's not a thought. It's not a secondary consequence of rational processes. It's way deeper than that. It's something that drives rationality itself. So now you Does are just it vary amongst people. Definitely. Yeah. De but it varies in this way, as far as I can tell. So that, so imagine, as you said, that there's an optimal load. Right, you exceed right. that, and to your detriment. Yes. and you see that in the weight room. You pull a muscle, you hurt, or you'll hurt yourself. Yeah. You can injure yourself very badly. Right, you can take yourself out for the count. Um, but then, if you if you work too little, well, then there's no gain in it. You have to find that thin edge where you're competent at what you're doing, but you're pushing yourself. That's going to be where meaning lies. That's what meaning tells people. It says you're on the edge where you're competent and and out of undue danger but pushing yourself enough so that you're continually developing that's the instinct of meaning and that looks to me like it's a consequence of the interaction between the right and the left hemispheres and a consequence of the interaction between the negative emotion systems anxiety and pain that regulate you that protect you from harm and the exploratory and play systems that drive you forward you want the exploratory and play systems to drive you forward but then they're regulated by these negative emotions so you don't hurt yourself. And if you get that optimally right, then that's the maximal, that's the point of maximal challenge. And that makes you really alert because your positive emotion is functioning. That's what's driving you forward. This is worth doing. And your negative emotions are alert too, saying, yeah, but be awake and be careful. And you know what that's like in the weight room. If you know, you're lifting something that's at the edge of your ability and you've got a spotter, you want to push and you can barely do it and you want to make sure that you're not going to like, Pull yeah. your arm down and rip the hell out of your muscle. But it, you, you're right on that edge, and that's the place of maximal gain. And that sense of meaning, that's what puts you on the border between chaos and order. right? Because too much order means you're just practicing what you already know. And then you, then you, you stultify and stagnate. And too much chaos means you better look out because you're going to hurt yourself. You're pushing yourself beyond your limits. You stay right on that edge. That's where there's maximal meaning. And, and the only you're way to wired find out where that. that edge is... Just to push it. To push it. Yeah. Now, well, one of the things I recommend to young people, especially true for people in their 20s, is that you should push yourself beyond your limits of tolerance in your 20s to find out where it is. How much can you work? How disciplined can you become? Like, can you work 12 hours a day? Can you work eight hours a day? Can you work three hours a day? Like, flat out. Where's your limit? And how much, how much work can you do and how much socialization? You should find out. Push yourself past and then back off to, to that point where it's optimally sustainable. That's what a lot of people do, isn't it? I mean, they party too much when they're in their well, 20s. They, they make a lot of mistakes. It's what, it's, it's, it's what they're doing, and I would say, in sort of a haphazard way, right? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's that instinct to go out there and do more. Right. And, but it's, it's unregulated, and it's not, it's not as self-conscious as it might be. It's good to know that there's – it's good to think about that as a goal. 
It's like you're trying to discover what your limitations are when you're, when you're in your 20s so that you can hit that edge so that you can sustain yourself across the decades. And so, yeah, because you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to have too much fun, right? Too much fun takes you out. You don't want to be the oldest guy at the disco, you know? It's not, it's not fun being the 40-year-old at the singles bar, precisely. So you want to make sure that what you're doing is age appropriate and you want to push yourself in every direction that you can, but you should be doing that with an aim in mind. It's like you're trying to make yourself into a better and more competent person. And so some discipline along with the fun is a good idea. So to take care of yourself and the people around you, that's a... One of the things I recommended to people, and I've had quite a few people actually tell me that they've done this, interestingly enough, I said, well, one thing you could aim at, if you had any sense when you were young, is to be the most worth... You could be the most reliable person at your father's funeral. And so I think that's a good challenge. And I had a bunch of people come up to me in this last tour and tell me that that's exactly what they did. These were often young guys, you know, like before 20. Said my dad died suddenly or, you know, he died after a year's illness and it was just taking me out. And no wonder, you know. He said, I said, I was listening to your lectures. You said you want to be the most reliable person at the funeral because everyone else is grieving and what the hell else are you going to do? He said, that's what they tried to do and that got him through it. So... No, that's part of that picking up that load as far as I'm concerned. You get a little self-respect out of that too in a real sense, right? Because, you know, you're this sort of sad suffering creature that's capable of a fair bit of malevolence. But if you find out that you can carry a heavy load and take care of yourself and have a little leftover for some other people, then you can wake up at three in the morning and think, well, man, I could be worse. And this is not a political perspective. This is a positive, constructive way of looking at how to navigate the world. But when you break down these sort of behavior types, whether it's the people that generally support socialism or socialist ideas or they're anti-competition versus people that are pro-pushing yourself, they fall into these right-wing, left-wing sort of paradigms in this really weird way. 